that's it, the conflict is all on again. No matter which month or year it is, when you're hearing this phrase, it's almost always in the news. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is like the ultimate never-ending story. A story with many players, a lot of complexities, and a story that has been on a continuous loop since the creation of the State of Israel back in 1948. More than 70 years have passed, and we are still in the same situation. While it is true that Israel's relations with the Arab countries are improving at a rapid pace, on the Palestinian issue, things are still as tense and deadlocked as ever. The territory encompassing Israel, which comprises 23% of the former British Mandate of Palestine, has been divided and redivided again and again, giving rise to a complex map of Jewish majority and Muslim majority enclaves, with little cohesion between them. This lack of territorial cohesion also fuels complexity at the political and social level, especially in the parts currently controlled by the Arab Palestinians, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. And the Gaza Strip is the clear protagonist of this video. In 2005, following the completion of the Israeli disengagement plan promoted by then Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, which involved, incidentally, the withdrawal of troops, military posts, and the dismantling of 21 Israeli civilian settlements, Gaza managed to administer itself independently after decades of being under the control first of Egypt and then of Israel. Initially, the Hamas group formed a unity government with Fatah, the major Palestinian political party, an agreement that collapsed just a year later. Since then, the relationship between Fatah and Hamas has gone from bad to worse, among other reasons because both claim control over the territories controlled by the other side. Between 2006 and 2011 alone, there were situations of real war between the two factions in the streets of Gaza. Shootings, armed clashes, the lynching of leaders and supporters, targeted assassinations, kidnappings. It is estimated that the conflict claimed the lives of more than 1,000 Palestinians. The fact is that the pieces of land ended up being shared out. Basically, Hamas was left with political and military control of the Gaza Strip, while Fatah took control of the West Bank. But that wasn't the only problem. After the rupture between the two, the terrorist group Hamas of jihadist and anti-Zionist ideology started a war against Israel, which Fatah did not support. Since then, Hamas has been carrying out relatively frequent rocket launches and kidnapping attempts, among other operations. Therefore, in order to contextualize what we're going to tell you in this video, it's important to keep in mind that it is Hamas from Gaza, which is practically at war with Israel, not Fatah, which is the group that controls the Palestinian National Authority and most of the Palestinian territory and population. <laughs> Then, in addition to Hamas, we also have the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, another terrorist group that also fires rockets into Israel from Gaza, and sometimes even from the West Bank. And then there's the Iranian-funded Shiite group, Hezbollah, which also occasionally fires rockets and missiles at Israeli soil from southern Lebanon. So you can imagine that in an area as populated as the Israeli coast, with a group like Hamas controlling a territory of 365 square kilometers and more than 2 million inhabitants, and others like Islamic Jihad or Hezbollah also operating in the area, it becomes vital, indispensable, priority number one for Israel's security forces to develop advanced defense systems. <laughs> Because in this case, we're not talking about a game, nor a potential threat, but a reality. Without all these advanced systems, the situation would be practically one of permanent war. And with all of them, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and Hezbollah frequently launching armed projectiles against Israel, perhaps the most important system, or at least the most important in recent times, is what is known as the Iron Dome. Would you like to know more about what is probably the most advanced missile shield in the world? What it consists of, how it works, and what it protects against? Well, listen up. Rocket Rain. I'll put it bluntly, the Iron Dome is a true marvel of military technology. For example, it's capable of intercepting 90% of the rockets launched from Gaza by Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which believe me, is no easy task. The vast majority of the rockets currently used by these organizations have a range of less than 100 kilometers and measure from less than one meter long to a maximum of about three meters. We're talking, for example, about the Qassam rockets, the Syrian-made Khaibar M302, or the Iranian Fajr 5 rockets that Hamas is believed to be able to manufacture in Gaza thanks to the transfer of technology from Iran. But there are less powerful ones that have a range of barely two kilometers and are about 90 centimeters in length. They are very, very small targets to find and destroy. In general, these rockets do not have advanced technology, since they do not even have guidance systems, which does not allow them to be even called rockets. 
So what exactly do these attacks look like? How are these rockets launched? Well, the truth is, is that it's not the most advanced technology in the world. In fact, the way to operate them is very simple. The rockets are placed on a launch pad and the launch inclination and the amount of fuel required are calculated according to the target. For example, if they want to attack Tel Aviv, about 70 kilometers away, they will need a higher angle and more fuel than if they want to attack Ashkelon, which is only about 20 kilometers from Gaza. Now, what is the biggest problem? The differential fact that makes these rockets really dangerous. Well, basically, neither Hamas nor Islamic Jihad nor Israel, nor anybody else, knows exactly where the hell they are going to land. In other words, these rockets are totally random. They could either land in a wheat field or end up embedded against a civilian residential building. And that is precisely the Iron Dome's mission, to prevent those rockets from hitting the ground. Something that, on the other hand, also saves a lot of economic damage in Israel. Take a look at this graph. In it, you can see the comparison between two years, 2006 and 2014, in which a similar number of rockets were launched against Israel, first by Hezbollah in 2006 and later by Hamas in 2014. In 2006, when the Iron Dome was not yet in place, damage costs amounted to $195 million. In 2014, with the dome already in place, damages excluding system costs amounted to $29 million. Even if we calculate the cost of missile shield operations, the bill to be paid in 2014 would amount to $111 million, about $80 million less than the damage caused by Hezbollah in 2006 alone. Of course, this is not the most important thing. Obviously, the most important thing is how to reduce the risk that one of these rockets or missiles ends up embedded in a residential neighborhood or an office tower. By the way, a side note here. According to international law, firing rockets at will against civilians is a war crime. And yes, I know that in this type of scenario, it is difficult to conveniently gauge the responsibility of each party. But beyond the consequences or the reaction to them, with which you may agree to a greater or lesser extent, launching rockets and missiles indiscriminately is not only a serious aggression, but also a war crime. I say this because many journalists forget this point. But back to the subject. Did you know that between just May 10th and 13th in 2020, 2021, Israel was attacked by more than 1,300 rockets. It was the largest rocket attack in the history of the Arab-Israeli conflict, and it is also the occasion where the Iron Dome has been pushed to its limits the most. Just look at the numbers. Of those 1,300 rockets, only about 200 managed to fall on Israeli soil, and another 200 or so would have fallen into Gaza itself due to launching failures. This means that the Iron Dome must have destroyed about 900 rockets in three days. And here's an important detail. Right here is when many people claim that the rocket launching is not serious because, well, Let's see, in the end, they're not going to land. But then, why does Hamas launch hundreds and hundreds, thousands of rockets on Israel? Well, precisely because of the effectiveness of the Iron Dome. Hamas knows that if it wants any of its rockets to hit Israel, what it has to do is launch salvos of many, many rockets at the same time to try to saturate the capacity of the system. So it's not that they're harmless fireworks. But wait, there's more. I'm sure by now you're all wondering how on earth this dome actually works. What detection systems does it use? How much did it cost to set it up? How much does it cost operate. Well, let's take a closer look. The shield that protects Israel. The Iron Dome was installed and put into operation in 2011. The reason for its development was none other than the increased frequency and sophistication of rocket attacks launched by Hamas and Hezbollah on Israel between 2000 and 2010. And based on experience, it wasn't a bad idea. It is estimated that the system has intercepted more than 3,000 rockets and counting. It was developed by Rafael Advanced Defense Systems and Israel Aerospace Industries, two public companies of the Israeli aerospace and military industry. It is probably the greatest work of the Israel military industry, the flagship, the jewel in the crown. And of course, as you can imagine, it didn't come cheap. The Israeli government has spent an estimated $100 million on each battery or subunit in the system, and they currently have 10 in service, with plans to increase that count to 15. In other words, we're talking about a system costing at least $1 billion. But how does it work? Well, this image may help you to visualize it. 
Each battery consists of three to four launchers, each equipped with 20 Tamiya guided missiles. Then, other fundamental elements are the ELM-2084 radars and the BMC, the Battle Management and Control System. The three elements, that is the launchers, radar and control system, make this whole system work. Basically, what the radar does is detect threats, usually in the form of rockets or even drones, and then the BMC orders the launchers to launch guided missiles, whose mission it is to destroy the threat in the air. The system is generally designed for a single Tamir missile to destroy a threat, although there are times when more than one is needed to reach the target. To give you an idea, each Tamir missile costs between $20,000 and $100,000, although the consensus figure is around $50,000 per unit. In other words, to repel an attack like the one in the second week of May 2021, with at least 1,300 rockets launched against Israel, it would cost at least $55 million in Tamar missiles alone. In terms of range, each battery can defend an area of about 150 square kilometers and has a range of about 70 kilometers. In other words, a single battery is capable of completely protecting a medium-sized city. That is the main reason why there are 10 batteries currently deployed and then they're looking at having 15. The high cost of each battery explains why the Iron Dome is only deployed in populated areas. In addition, the Iron Dome has another benefit. It buys time. See for yourself. Take a look at this map. An Israeli living next to the Gaza Strip only has 15 seconds to take shelter in a bunker if an attack occurs. This time increases to about 30 seconds if you live in Ashkelon, 45 seconds in Ashdod, and about 90 seconds in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem. That means in the time that you took to listen to this estimate, you should have already gotten into a shelter if you lived in Ashkelon and heard the siren. And of course, in the end, what the Iron Dome does is not only intercept and destroy nine out of 10 threats, but it also allows people a greater margin to get to shelter in a safe place. It is like a kind of guardian angel or a soccer goalkeeper who operates in the sky and tries to keep the balls from hitting your house or your business. Of course, in this case, we're not talking much about balls, but about something much more dangerous. And so this is how the modern system that protects Israel's skies morning, noon, and night works. But having reached this point, it's your turn. What do you think of the Iron Dome? Do you think its high level of effectiveness could make Israel's enemies switch from rocket fire to another type of threat? As always, we love to hear from you. So don't hesitate to leave us your opinion in the comments down below. And of course, if you found the video interesting, don't forget to like it and subscribe to Visual Politic. All the best. See you in the next one.